Welcome to video number 5 in my Garb and Nunjak series. I've taken the time since the last video to further work on the templates of my homepage and I want to give you a quick overview now before we'll talk about template inheritance. Originally I wanted to tackle the topic of Nunjax and PHP already, but I think inheritance is also an important topic and it will help us to further simplify the templates. So let's have a look. So first let's look at what I've done since the last video. So I used what we've learned, so the variables, the data and the partials to really strip down the template. And yeah, now this content layout really looks like a template, like a layout. We down here, we clearly see the structure of the page. So it's very simple now. We have includes for header, for navigation and footer. So we can easily make changes to those in the dedicated files. We have here the content block, which we'll provide on a per page basis. And up here in the header, we mostly use variables for data, which needs to be changed for the different pages or also globally and also includes for different scripts. So it looks very clean now. Now let's look at some of the partials. So for example, the footer, which is interesting. So again, here the footer, the data is provided via this uh, global page data here. Let's have a look. So down here, the footer, there are links I provide. And this is similar to what I showed you for the navigation, which by the way, now also contains a German part. So for the footer, it's the same. So I want to have an imprint, a privacy policy, a disclaimer. But yeah, if I wanted to remove something or add something new, I could do just that. Now let's again look at the footer because I use a additional command here. So first, similar as to the navigation, I again do a for loop over all the items in the page footer. And uh, this is actually wrong. I'm just seeing that. So I use the English footer here. So I have both a German and an English one. So I have to make sure to use the right one. So I'm iterating over the content over the array and I don't just do the same for each item as I did for the navigation. Here I want to have a different HTML markup depending on which item it is. For example, there's a thing I can use within the loop which is called loop.first. So this tells me if this is true within a loop, this tells me it's the first item. And for the first item, I want to start right away with the URL and then I have some spaces. Then for the last item, it's different. I start with some spaces and then I have the URL. And otherwise in between, I have spaces to both sides. So I have spaces, then the URL and then spaces at the end. Let's have a look at the homepage so you better understand what I'm talking about here. So down here at the footer you see the three links here and the imprint. Then I have a spacer, so some spaces, then the spacer, another set of spaces here again, spaces, then the spacer, another set of spaces. And this is different behavior depending on if you have the first item here or the last item or an item in between. And for this I use this checker here to see if I'm currently at the first or last item. So this is very helpful and Nunjax provides a lot of such neat little tags which you can use to do helpful stuff really. Now another change I want to point out here, you've seen that I started also introducing here the German parts and I also have already one German page up here. And now this page is in a subfolder, so it's not in the top folder of the pages. So I had to adjust the GARP file. And what I've done here, I had to change this, yeah, this glob. And yeah, what's a glob? A glob is basically pointing to a set of files using some wildcards. So with this here, you say basically the single star it says all the files which end on PHP here in this folder. And if you have two stars, this basically saying go recursively through all the folders, all the subfolders of pages. So what I target really are all the PHP files now within pages. And down here, what this does, I target all the HTML files within pages. So this is really helpful. It's a bit similar to regex expressions, but not quite as powerful. Okay, I think now it's time to get to the core of this video, which is inheritance. So why would we need it? Let's look at the slideshow content layout and put it next to the content layout. So let's just look at both next to each other. And what we see is both are nearly the same. 
A slideshow content layout just contains a little more information. For example, here another include for the slideshow script and down here another div with the include of the slideshow. The rest is really the same. So now we have a lot of code duplication and what we can do here now, we can use inheritance, which will remove nearly all the code from here because we can inherit most of the data, most of the structure from the content layout. Now, how do we do that? The first thing is we have to define additional blocks here. For example, here we want to be able to put additional scripts and in this case, the slideshow. So why not just put another block here and this block we call scripts. We have to put the end block and yeah, now we have an area up here where we can put additional scripts. Now the same down here, we put an additional block and this block is specific if we want to have a slideshow here. So a content slideshow. So let's put a block and this block we call slideshow. And then also the end block as usual. Now in terms of inheritance, you can think of those blocks as of methods. For example, if you're familiar with Java and inheritance in Java, those would be methods and you would even be able to put in a default declaration. So let's just put in down here something to test. This is a test and yeah, later we use it. But first let's go to the slideshow template and remove everything aside from those parts which we want to use to override. So at the top here, also this has to go, uh, the command we need to use, you already know it, it's the extends command. And yeah, what do we extend? We extend basically just the content layout. Now what we want to do is we want to override the blocks. So similar to Java when you want to override a method. So we start the block we want to override, which is scripts and we end the block down here. Now we've done an override. So this default declaration will now be overridden with this content. And yeah, we do the same for the slideshow block here. So let's just copy this over. It's a little faster. And down here we close the block. Yeah, that's really it. Now this slideshow content layout is really just this information which is new. The rest is just taken over or extended from the content layout. Let's just test this. Still compiles. Let's have a look. The index and although we're now just using this little piece of code here, we still get everything we wanted. So also down here we have the code for the slideshow and here's actually the slideshow itself. But what I also wanted to show you is that down here you still have access to the implementation of the block in basically the super template or the super class if we talk in Java terms. So same as in Java where you have the super keyword, you can also use super here in Nunjax. And you call it like a function. So let's just do that. Super. And yeah, that's really it. Now this will get the implementation here from the top, but it would get it from the scripts where we don't have one. Let's move it down to the actual block, which contains a super implementation. So now the slideshow. Let's quickly test it and see what it does now. And that's actually an error here. Line six, column six. That's basically here. And this didn't work because I was a little fast here. For such a call, we don't start with a curly brace and a percent. We start with double curly braces. So same as for variables. And now it should work. Let's do it again. And if we now head over to the index, you see that here up above the gallery, we now have this. This is a test from the super template class. This is not very helpful and we don't need it here, but I still wanted to show you this because you might have situations where you want to provide default implementation or declaration. I'm not sure how they call it in Nunjax. And then you are flexible to use it in your inheriting templates. But yeah, this is not needed for me here. I just want this clean layout. So 
so this clean inheritance and also maybe to point out here you could spin this even further so you can have a real inheritance chain going down as far as you like but in my opinion you should keep the inheritance flat here in Nunjax. Otherwise I think things can get complicated quite fast here and remember the goal with using Nunjax here was to make our page easier to maintain and yeah, not to make life harder for us. So if you look at this here what I have in the templates already complicated enough in my opinion. So we have the German parts, the German templates, English parts, English templates, global parts, schema, data. So I think that's enough and I don't want to overcomplicate things or over de design things now by creating even deeper inheritance chains. Okay so I hope you liked this video and also this series so far. Please leave comments if you have suggestions. Uh, if for example you have questions just ask them right away. I try to answer them either directly in the comments or just make a video on it if it's more complicated stuff and also if you find things which I could do better yeah, just let me know and yeah, see you in the next video.